Hey guys, how is it going? I hope you guys are doing well. So most most of the uh, cameras that I've shot with uh, so far are pretty nice cameras. I've shot uh, with the Mamiya M645. I've shot with the Minota SRT202. I've shot with pretty nice SLRs and uh, medium format cameras so far. Uh, uh, but one uh, one class of cameras that I haven't showed myself uh, shooting with are my point and shoot cameras. You know, there's this saying that the best camera is the camera that you have with you. So for this episode of the vlog, I'm actually going to challenge myself. I took the cheapest, the crappiest um, point and shoot camera that I have, and I'm going to challenge myself uh, to. To make the best image that I can get. So I have three strong contenders for the crappiest cameras that I have. I got these cameras from a thrift store in a bulk purchase. Uh, I got a lot of cameras uh, that came in with diff different cameras in there and these ones were just thrown in, right? And uh, I, I've actually contemplated uh, selling them on eBay but you know lately I've, I've been figuring, you know, I'll keep them. I'll keep them because you never know the gems that you have. Uh, plus, I could use them for lomography. I could use them for candid shots. Uh, I could use them with expired film uh, to create a certain look that I want. So the three strong contenders that I had was uh, number one, this one right here. This is such a crappy camera that <laughs> it does not even come with any brand name it just says focus free lens and that's that's all it says there, there's no it's fully manual there are no battery compartments in there um, it's fully manual it's focus free as the name implies it is basically just a fixed lens point and shoot camera you have to wind it over here uh, to advance the film um, it is as basic and as crappy as they get the next contender is this one right here the Concorde this one is a bit it's a step up actually you can see it has a flash built-in flash which is actually quite advanced it also has some more features at the back some LED lights here I guess that would be for if the flash is ready to indicate if the flash is ready um, oh Japan optics look at that so I guess that must mean something it's also fully manual you push so you slide this twice to advance the film so that's another strong, strong contender for the crappiest camera that I have. The next crappy camera would be, whoa, this one has another no-name brand. <laughs> it just says Panorama. Wide pick panoramic lens. Wow. So look at that. These cameras are so crappy and so basic, right? But my challenge, and I'm challenging myself, can I shoot decent Im images with these crappy cameras? So I think I need to make a decision now, really. Um, I need to decide between these three which camera I should probably shoot with. And I'm going to go with the most, the least advanced of this lot. Because the whole challenge is shooting with the crappiest camera. So I'm going to go with the crappiest, the most featureless <laughs> camera that I have, which is this thing here. This thing is like paperweight. It is so light. It's, it's basically a lens in a plastic, poorly designed plastic body. So, I'm going to load this with some expired film. I have some expired film here. This is the Kodak Gold 200. So I'm going to load this with some expired film. 
and we'll see how this goes. Okay, so let's load this with film. It's going to be a little complicated because I'm not familiar with this kind of loading system. There is no slot to put the end of this uh, film in. But we'll see how that goes. So this is as basic as it gets. Oh, I guess I have to lift this up. Does it even lift it? Oh, <laughs> it actually comes off. <laughs> Now oh, that's a good crappy camera. <laughs> yeah, this fits in quite tight in there. Now this just pushes back in. Wow. Okay. And now this slides over. Okay, I'm making sure that this gets caught in there. And now I'm going to try and advance. Okay, this is going to be a little challenging. Okay, it's advancing. Just make sure it quite rolls over at least one time. Okay. So I'm going to waste the first shot. Oh. Okay, what am I supposed to do? The shutter did not even fire. Boy, am I doing something wrong here? Why is this thing not firing? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this thing out until I hear the film get loose. Okay, then the film came off. I'm going to take the film. Oh, snap. Uh, I'm going to keep this film for a demonstration, it's expired anyways. But yeah, it doesn't fire. Look at that. I should have checked that first. Oh, it did fire. So what was wrong here? I should have been patient. So I'm determined to do this, so I'm gonna put in another, another film which is the Agfa Vista Plus 200. So let's get this done. This thing actually works, it's just that um, I had to advance it all the way. I had to be patient. Well, I learned something new. And I hope you guys learned something new as well. You have to push down this part here to make it Catch on, and when this is crucial, this part here, that roller is crucial. When that roller stops, oh, there you go. See, it's, it's stopped. You can't advance it anymore. That's what I should have waited for. And now I can shoot and waste this particular film. So the fire. I'm going to fire and the shutter should open up, okay, it did open up, it did fire, advance to the next shot, okay, now I'm all set to go. So I'm out here in the, in the park and uh, bright and sunny day.
Now I must say, I am truly, truly shocked. I mean, I cannot believe that a camera of this quality could produce images like that. Like, and it has to be the lens. It has to be the lens. But the kind of images that I got, the aesthetics that I got from this camera, untouched. Just images that you saw were untouched. The kind of aesthetics that I got from this is just, I'm marveled by it. It, it, it is the kind that I crave for when I use film cameras. I mean, that soft, dreamy look. And it's, it's I just love that for landscapes. If a couple of the of the photos were a bit blurry, and I think if I if I was more steady with my hands, those would have turned out even better. I find that my recommendation, if you are going to use a camera like this, is use this in the daylight. Use it in the bright uh, daylight settings. Um, I think the day that I went out to take these photos, it was nice, bright, and sunny. And so that helps. I think these are well calibrated for bright daylight. My guess would be that if it's cloudy, you you won't get as the image wouldn't look as good. But I'm just shocked that a featureless cover like that could give me images like that. And that just goes to um, highlight the point that film is amazing. Film is really, really something special. Imagine such a featureless camera could bring out um, this sort of passion in me or this love in me and imagine that I was able to get these decent photos um, with with such a featureless camera. This has helped me to b become a bit more confident in my skill as a, as a photographer. Um, so now I know that it's not just about the camera, right? It's also about my skill and my ability to compose images and my ability to see something and picture in my mind that this is going to be a good uh, photo. So using a tool like this has helped me grow. If I, was, if I was shooting with a digital camera, I mean, I wouldn't get this confidence from a digital camera because a digital camera would, would do, a, it's so high tech and it would do so much for me that I will not have that confidence that I'm getting in my own ability as a photographer um, just by using this camera here. So needless to say that I am so impressed. I wanted, I was, I was planning to get rid of these cheap cameras in, in, in bulk. I, I had put on a posting on eBay to get rid of all of them because I didn't find them to be valuable at all. When I got these in a lot at the thrift store, I just put them aside because I was like, oh goodness, what is this? These cheap cameras. But after shooting with this, oh my goodness, I have gained a new level of respect and admiration for this. I'm taking this thing out again to do landscape shots. I'm gonna focus on landscapes because I think this that's the strength of this camera. Landscapes in the daytime. I think that's the strength of this camera here. Oh these cameras. And I'm going to I'm going to continue shooting with them because as long as they give me that joy and that then fill that void that I'm I'm, I'm looking for with film photography. I'll continue doing it. So anyways, I hope that you guys enjoy this. Basically, as they say, as the adage goes, never judge a book by its cover. Or in this case, never judge a film camera by its features or its looks. <laughs> Seriously, guys, I hope that this inspires you. Go, go to your local thrift store, pick up some cheap camera, anything that you can find, any film camera that you can find. Shoot with it, put a roll in it, go out there and shoot with it as an adventure. 
and take it to your local uh, film lab and uh, see what turns out. You might be pleasantly surprised. Mm -hmm.